All right, guys, as promised, here is the paper 2H walkthrough of the June 2018 series under Edexcel. Okay, so I'm just going to go straight into it because I know you guys have seen this quite a few times. As always, make sure you use a black pen when you enter the exam and you can use calculators. I recommend always using calculators as always, yeah? And in the formula sheet, the formula sheet um, is always in the first page. I know some of you guys asked me where can I find it, so <laughs> literally open the booklet and it's there. It's best to definitely make a note of what formulas are not in the list so you can try and summarize them, yeah? Anyway, um, here's a bunch of them, so you're given a lot. But otherwise, let's go straight into question one, yeah? So we've got 23 to go and let's have a look. Okay, 1A. Make A the subject of this formula over here. So all I can say is that when you want to make a certain letter subject, write the, instead of writing M equals, write AC minus BD equals M. So always start with the subject first, or the equation has a subject. And then all you got to do is literally move every term and make A the subject. So the firstly, let's get rid of the BD, yeah? To throw BD across, if it's negative, it becomes a plus BD. Because remember, the sign always flips when you throw across the equal sign. And then to separate the C from the A, just divide by C. So B, A equals M plus BD over C. And that's it. We leave that here. Now, next bit. Solve the inequality. So always imagine this inequality is as equal signs, yeah? And then just solve as always. So first things first, let's get rid of the numbers away from x. So let, instead of minus 4, we need to plus 4 across. So we're going to have 5x less than, so 39 and 4 is 43. And then as usual, just like the first example, we're going to divide by 5 to separate the 5 and isolate it. So we're going to have x less than 43 over 5. And you can leave it here. You don't have to go deeper than this. Now C, factorize fully. Okay, so this could mean one or two things, but let's just jump in, yeah? So to factorize, what I always do is firstly, put a bracket underneath like that and just copy the layout. Then I ask myself, okay, so what numbers go into 18 and 12? The biggest number you can think of. Well, they're both in the two times tables, um, the three times tables, the four times tables, and also the six times tables. So you can pull out six, now the e's, they both have at least an e and they both have at least an e squared. So we can so they both have e squared in common. And as the f's, they, they both have a single f in common. Now all you want to do here, and let me just change the color of the pen, is to literally ask yourself what goes in each of these blocks. So what is missing? Well, we took out the 6, so you're going to have 3, because 3 times 6 is 18. You have no more e's left, because they do took out both of them. But you still have um, f to power 2 left, because there's two more f's. And then, do, then repeat the same for the right. So for 12e, so you took out 6, you got 2 left. You got an extra e remaining, and you have no more f's. So the result is going to be um, 6e squared f times 3f squared minus 2e. And that should be it. All right, question two. Work out the difference between the largest share and the smallest share when 3,450 yen is divided into these ratios. So it tells us firstly that we have a total amount and this is every single part possible. So when it comes to certain ratio questions like these ones, we should add up the ratios firstly. This will give us the equivalent number of parts, which is 15 by the way. We should equal the total money, which makes sense because the money has been divided into these many parts. Now all we have to ask ourselves is firstly, what is one part? Because it's always good to know one part. Well, one part is going to equal... This money, 3,450 divided by 15. And according to my calculator, it's about 230 yen. Now, now let's, ha now let's have a look clearly what the question wants. It says work out the difference between the larger share and the smaller share. Well, the larger share and the smaller share is clearly referring to two parts and seven parts. And the difference between them is five parts. So the question wants us to work out what is five parts. Well, if we know one part is 230, 5 plus is 5 times bigger. So two, 230 times 5 is going to give us um, doo -doo -doo, 1,150 yen. And that's it, guys. All done. So, number 3 now. Gopal is paid 20,000 rupees each month. J J Jamuna is paid 19,200 rupees each month. Gopal and Jamuna are both given an increase in their monthly pay. So let's keep this in mind, yeah? After the increase... They are both paid the same amount each month. Alright, so we have to somehow equate these, yeah? Gopal is given an increase of 8%. Work out the percent increase that Jamuna is given. 
Well, let me say something, yeah? With these kind of equations, always start with this. You always have some original value and some multiply, like 1 plus or minus a rate, and it will give us a new value. In this case, we're increasing, so we're only concerned about the plus quantity. So we can say, for instance, yeah? So let's just take this side, yeah? We can say that GoPal had 20,000 and it increased by 8%, so 1 plus 8%, okay? And we know that this was equivalent to, instead of writing a new value, it will be a Jamuna's amount. And Jamuna earned 19,200, and this was an increase of something, let's say P, so we can work out the percentage, yeah? Now, all you have to do is literally just rearrange this equation and make P the subject, and that is the percentage done. So what you could do, instead of like, you know, working out separately, Firstly, divide 19,200 across, so we're going to have all of these lot, so 20,000, and by the way, this is just 1.08 over 19,200, and, you, and you're left with 1 plus P. And instead of just making another line, just subtract 1 across, so basically P, all of this minus 1 equals P. That's it, guys. Now, put this in the calculator, because I haven't done that yet. So you should get 20,000, 1.08 over 19,200 all of that minus 1 and should give us 1 over 8 so p is 1 over 8 so let me just write that down and again just to change the percentage guys just times it by 100 yeah and you should get 12.5 percent okay number four so show that this fraction on the left hand side can equal the right hand side well, the good thing is, on your calculator, you can actually do this so easily. But here's a, here's a, um, a couple of things we should do, yeah? So, there's a there's a button in the calculator, and this is if you're using the Casio, for example, FX. It could be uh, 83 or 85, even the later models. What I would do personally is firstly enter this function in, this fraction in, and you can use um, the shift button plus um, the this fraction button, so these two buttons, yeah? When you press it, you're going to get um, a mixed number. So enter this one in the calculator and you should get something like, let's have a look, 21, uh, 25 over 7. And then same for this one here. I mean, if you're not sure how to do this, this is easy to calculate, but you can just use that just to make your life easy. So you should also get 13 over um, 8. Now the trick is, is, is that what you could do is um, realize that because the answer is out of 56, you can try and force it to be out of 56. And let's have a look. How does 7 become 56? Well, you times the left-hand side of the fraction by 8, up and down, and times the right-hand side of the fraction by 7, up and down. And doing so, so in your calculator, you can just do 8 times 25. That should give us uh, 200. And 7 times 8 is 56. And do the same for the right side. Timesing up and down by 7, that will give us uh, 91 over 56. And then just putting in the calculator, 200 take away 91, is about 109 over 56 and then putting this in the calculator and then pressing well you could actually just write answers 153 over 56 and then you're done here but to confirm this this value exactly what you could do is put is uh, is press the shift um, s into decimal button what this does is that it converts it to a mixed number as well okay yeah guys that's literally a little shortcut for number four you could do it step by step, the original method, but because you're using a calculator, it's, it's always good to try and take some shortcuts. Okay, number five. Ooh, circle theorem. So, in the diagram below, P and Q are points on a circle with center O. Okay. So, Q2, uh, QT is a tangent to the circle. Angle OPQ is 18 degrees, and we need to work out the size angle PQT. So, PQT is from here to here to here. So essentially it's um, this shape. So we need to find this angle, okay? So let's have a look. A couple rules we need to spot here. Change the color to the pen. So when you have a tangent, so tangent is basically a straight line that touches a circle or any whatever curve once. And when it touches a circle, um, from the center of the line to the circle, it's always a 90 degrees angle. So it always makes a 90 degrees angle at anywhere, any point from the center to, to, the, to the edge of the circle. Now, what we can notice here is that this little shape here, inside the triangle, inside the circle, is actually um, an isosceles triangle. It's one of the properties here, yeah, of circles. So if this one's 18 degrees, then this one must also clearly be 18 degrees. And because we have a right angle here, we can say that 90 
take away 18 must give you the remainder 72 and that's it that's your answer 72 degrees now even though we got the actual answer we still need to give a reasoning right so let's have a look at everything we did so we said the first triangle was an isosceles yeah so you could say that triangle um was that o p q is isosceles so isosceles so therefore this means that angle so the right is clearly you can say this is angle o p q must equal o q p so angle o p q equals angle o q p which are both 18 degrees and also we can say that the line uh q t is perpendicular so perpendicular means it's at an angle of 90 degrees yeah it's perpendicular so 90 degrees to uh line or radius oq it doesn't have to be this this perfect but i mean as, as long as you can somehow justify it clearly so therefore go down a bit so therefore angle which so they want to find angle pqt must be the difference between 90 and 18 degrees and i believe this is more than enough i mean how many marks is it well it's three marks so i'll say three points okay